Here are five times when teen criminals realize they've been caught. Starting with a 12-year-old girl whose identity has not been released, admitting to officers that she used a knife to repeatedly stab her 9-year-old brother, Xander, while he was sleeping. When police officers arrived, the girl ran out the door to meet them and immediately began profusely apologizing. Come here, come here. I'm just gonna put handcuffs on just for now. Where's the knife? Sorry, Dad. I'm sorry, I don't know what's chest. I'm so sorry. I'm sorry. Please, I'm so sorry. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. Julie, you better pretty God, even I am sorry. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. How old are you? I'm 12 years old. Where's the knife? I was upstairs in my room and I threw it out the window. And it's still into the apartment right here. You threw it where? I threw it out my window upstairs. Right not, up not right there. It's the room. It's the other room. It's right behind the apartment. This apartment right here. Her mother, identified as April Lida, frantically follows and screams at her daughter as the young girl begs for forgiveness. The 12-year-old quickly informs the police of what happened and then suggests leading the police officers to where the knife had landed. Is there anybody else inside? the house? No, it's just me, my mom, and my brother. <laughs> hey, how would I get to the knife? Is there a, the back side? I can show you. Okay. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. <laughs> I really didn't want things to happen like this. This sucks. I'm so sorry. You're probably going to go to jail. I'm going to live the rest of my life. <laughs> That's it right, right there? there? Yes. Okay. The police officer then inspected the girl, who had self-inflicted cuts across her arms, while paramedics rushed her brother to the hospital. Hey, real quick, I'm gonna take you out of handcuffs and I'm gonna take your hoodie off, okay? <laughs> that way we can see the cut that you have. Okay. Take your hood off for me. <laughs> Is it just those? Those look old. Are they old? Oh, those. Yeah, those are a little. This one, those are old. With the, Do you have any the new? One that's brand new. This was brand that's new. from today. Yes. So with the same knife. Yes. Okay. While sitting in the cruiser with officers, the young girl repeatedly expressed fears that she had ruined her life and was going to spend the rest of her life in prison. It's okay, it's okay. He's in the hospital right now, little lady. Yeah. Pretty sure he will. There's the doctors. Doctors are all over there. She will take care of him. Your mom's over there too. I'm so sorry. I'm sorry. He's never going to forgive me. It's okay. Take a breath. I just want to wake up from this nightmare. Take a deep breath, you know. Really no, nobody's ruined my life, okay? All right. Lida is then interviewed by police, who say her daughter has never displayed aggressive behavior in the past. I cannot imagine what you're going through right now. She's never I mean, been aggressive or anything. Yeah. It's not like her. Like it's like they bully each other like brother and sisters, but it's never they never like fist fight or do anything like that. So it's just completely. Out. He was in bed. He was downstairs trying to sleep. I don't know why she even went down there. Like. What the hell was she? I don't understand any of it. All I know is I heard him screaming, like the worst scream ever. And I thought maybe he was having a nightmare, so I started trying to wake him up. And there's blood everywhere. And he said she stabbed me. She stabbed me. I was like, oh, no, no. And he started going in and out of consciousness. And so that's what they told me to put him on the floor, do chest compressions. And uh, and, and I couldn't find my daughter anywhere. I was screaming her name, and she ran out after she did it because she was scared. And uh, Xander, 
who was taken into emergency surgery, succumbed to his three stab wounds just over two hours later. Because the girl involved is only 12 years old, the Tulsa District Attorney's Office couldn't share any information about the case, including what charges she faces. But most probably, it would be second-degree murder with all the evidence we've seen so far. Though it isn't always the case for teenagers to commit such heinous crimes, but running from the police is definitely not a good idea. 18-year-old Caleb Abbott and 19-year-old Dylan Bingham, who, on August 16, 2021, recklessly tried to hit a police car after avoiding being pulled over. The incident occurred as La Crosse Police Officer Sergeant Craig Teff was conducting his usual patrol near the intersection of 4th Street and Ferry Street when he saw the teen's car. The sergeant signals the vehicle to stop, but instead it speeds off and runs past a stoplight. The sergeant then decides to decline a pursuit, but alerts the other officers of the car. Soon after, the vehicle crashed into a parked truck near George and Gore, but when the police arrived, the teens decided to run away. What's up? Yeah, he's gonna stop. Before you out with two here. They're both running right now. Eastbound. I think we're Livingston. Oh, Eastbound Livingston. Please stop! Caleb was the first to be captured and was immediately put in handcuffs. Stop. Get on the ground right now. I'll get both here. Get on, on the ground. ground. Get on the ground. No, I don't got nothing. I'll be right here. Okay, just get Here, on the ground, let me please. Do this. Okay, you alright? Yeah, I don't got nothing, bro. I was in the passenger seat. I just got scared as. Why are you running? I was scared as. Child chasing me. Okay. Put your hands on your back. I don't have nothing on me, officer. I was just scared as shit because he started running. Why is he running? I have no fing clue, dog. What's your buddy's name? What buddy? The guy in the blue that ran off. Okay. I just know him by Notch. Notch? That's all I know him by You know Notch. him, who is No, it? all I know him by is Notch or Nooch. It's just like an alias. Whose car he was calls that him. you guys were in? His car? He called, he, he just calls me currency. Okay. I was just in the passenger seat, dog. I don't even know what the f is going on. Where, did you, where were you guys coming from, do you remember? When the police officer begins to question Caleb, he lies about knowing Dylan directly and being the one in the driver's seat. A few yards away, Caleb's colleague goes through the same fate. Dylan then breaks down into tears as he begins to realize the kind of trouble he is in. I didn't f***ing do anything, dog! What's going on, man? Dude! I don't want you to hurt yourself. Don't be banging Well, I probably f***ing gonna! Okay, relax. What? What's what? Do you think on? you're just because you're pretty? I'm not gonna f***ing to you just like the rest of them? You can to me all you want, but you're still gonna have to tell me what's going on. Is your head okay? No, bro, my head's not okay. I wanted to... F no, dude, my head not okay, okay? Okay. Do you need medical attention? Dylan, stop. Take a deep breath. Dude, I'm a disappointment. Take a deep breath. You're not a disappointment. Second, get out of jail. Blow my fucking brains out. Take a deep breath. Keep breathing. Keep fucking breathe, doggy. After searching the area, authorities found a short-barreled shotgun with a pistol grip located near the area where Bingham was hiding and a taser on the passenger side of the vehicle they were driving. So they said that there was a witness and the witness said that the red sweatshirt the person carrying the red sweatshirt in the duffel bag was the one driving when they ran. Did this guy have a duffel bag? They said that when officer no, th this was the only duffel bag. So they said that when officers, uh, or when, when whoever, he had the black duffel bag, so unless they switched while they're running, he said that it's possible that the witness just mixed him up, yeah. Police officers discuss how a witness had first seen Caleb carrying the duffel bag and somehow must have switched it when they were running. With this information, the officers confronted Caleb. So what's going on with the shotgun? Shotgun. Yeah. About it. Whose is it? Not in my possession, was it? Nope. Exactly. Okay. Now I'm going to tell you straight up, it's not mine. I've been straightforward with you this whole time. It's not mine. Okay. 
So obviously we kind of know what's going on, even though we don't know. Like you're not telling us. Yeah, I yeah. Get, I get that, yeah. but I'm telling you, it's not mine. Was it in my possession? Uh, I know. No, it so wasn't. Like, it so was not mine. Here's shot. the deal, man. If both you guys uh, are. Not, neither one gives us any information. He's not giving you okay. information because he okay. told me then, then, if some shit happens that he's going to take the charge because it's his okay. fucking well, shotgun. I'm, I'm, I'm telling you he's not doing that, so you both are going to end up getting charged for everything. Okay, this is some point. fucking bullshit because well, it's they, his. And that's, and that's why we're yeah. asking you. It's his, and he told me if anything fucking happens, I'm going down for that because it's fucking mine. Okay. So I'm not going down for that right. bullshit. He's not, he's not taking the fall like he said he would. <laughs> oh. yeah. Caleb mentions that the shotgun wasn't for him and there was no way he was going to take the fall for it. The relationship they both have is not too clear at this point. Bro, can you loosen this shit, dude? Look at Oh, it rolled up on you. Bro, I was not resisting it. You saw me as soon as you got to me. I'm resisting you running. It's, it's not. Resisting is trying to fucking fight back, dog. I was there and I said, all right, I'm right here. And I put my wallet and my phone on yeah, the I'm not, fucking ground, dog. Talk about that part. Talk about chasing you through the yards. Yeah, because he started fucking running. What was I supposed to do? Just sit there and fucking be scared, bro? It's natural fucking instinct. Fucking God, bro. Caleb was arrested later on and faced charges of running from the police, resisting arrest, and skipping bail three times. Meanwhile, Dylan was arrested and put in jail for having a gun as a felon, having an electric weapon, resisting arrest, and breaking probation. But Dylan and Caleb hitting a police car are nothing compared to Jacob, who actually hit a police car. Jacob Schwalbach, a 19-year-old who, on May 3, 2021, hit a lacrosse police squad car after running past a red at about 45 miles while driving impaired. After hitting the police SUV, Jacob's car nailed a stoplight which toppled onto his car. Uh, Dude, you just blew the red, man. Yeah, no, I didn't see it. 84 negative. Are That's you good? 80. Me? Yeah, I'm good. Are I you hurt? I just got some glass in there. I didn't know. I was just paying attention to the right. Are you hurt, man? It's my car. I mean, you got some good damage here, man. Why are you guys? Yeah, why don't you guys step out of the car? Dude, stop moving! Stop moving! Dude, park the car, man. It is smart. Okay, your vehicle's still moving, man. Hit your parking brake up. Can you step out, man? Yeah, I got you. Yeah, let's get you guys out of here. Come on. Step over here, man. Step over here. Step, step over here. Do you have an idea on you, man? ID, I think it's in my car. Funnily enough, the first thing Jacob says is, how is it going? With his car completely destroyed and the traffic light on top of it, looking at Jacob, one can clearly see that he is drunk as his eyes look glossy and his movements distorted. Jacob is seen on the sidewalk and is questioned by the officer. Sorry about that, man. I was in my place. I, had, I was running to my place. I had a shit so fucking bad. I think I might shit my pants, to be honest with you. Okay. I mean, you're just not paying attention? What's... I was I was not paying attention at all. Okay. You had anything to smoke tonight? Me? You had a drink? No. No? I smoked a joint like three days ago. Okay. Because uh, I smoked outside in my car. Jacob tries to explain what happened, but isn't entirely truthful when he is asked if he had anything to drink or smoke that day. However, when he was confronted, he started to open up. You smoked some weed today? Yeah, I did. Yeah, pretty recently. Very recently? Yeah. Probably two hours ago. Okay. How much? How much? Like, do you feel pretty high? Because you seem pretty high. No, I'm not high. You don't feel high? No. I, I see smoked. there's a bong in the car. Yeah, I just bought it from the one place. Okay. Smokes for us. I'm so sad. Okay, so when did you smoke? Two hours ago, you said? Two hours ago, yeah. At your house or where? 
In my house, just in buddies. Had buddies? Yeah. Like south side, north side? South or? side. Okay. So I went to the south side, so walks to one new bar. The police then asked Jacob to stand still so he could perform the eye test as he was clearly intoxicated. Put your right foot in front first. Okay, now you can begin if you understand. All right. Mississippi. Yep, just like I explained. Okay. Am I going to jail for this? I don't know right now, but no, probably not. Keep going. One Mississippi, two Mississippi. Okay. One Mississippi, two Mississippi. It's hard. One Mississippi. One Mississippi, two Mississippi, three Mississippi. Four Mississippi, five Mississippi. Okay. You can stop. Oh, no, I can't do that. That's shit. okay. Jacob refuses to confess to taking alcohol, but instead mentions how he had taken Xanax two hours earlier. But the police officer wasn't done as he asked him to perform some more tests. Jacob failed all of the tests he was asked to perform and was eventually arrested on several charges, including operating while under the influence and causing injury. Despite it all seeming a bit funny at some points, this entire situation could have taken a very different turn as in a video captured by the teenagers. We see Jacob and his friend driving at 120 miles per hour while making jokes about it. But teenagers acting recklessly doesn't stop here. It gets even worse. Two unidentified teens who, on the 27th of June, 2022, were arrested after allegedly ignoring commands to stay out of the street. The teens were selling water on the street and impeding traffic when police stopped and warned them to stay off the road. The incident caused a controversy on the internet, showing the end of the ordeal, including the arrests, but not the lead up. If y'all want to sell water bottles, that's fine. Stay out of the streets, though. Because you got. It's every. All over when we're walking. You guys are all. Just stay out of the streets. Just stay out of the streets. That's all I'm asking. I'm telling you right now, they're calling us. I don't want to do something about it. Right? Do you, I mean, do you need me to? Do you want me to write you a ticket for impeding traffic? You're probably right. You're probably right. I probably should. No, no you're right. You're right. Oh, now you're going to run. Okay. Yeah. That's probably good for you, too. Keep it up. Okay. Okay. Have a good day. Have a good day. Okay. Well, you're the one that said write you a ticket. Now you don't want, now you're going to walk away? As soon as the police officer steps out of his vehicle, the young boys run off, but one of them walks back, claiming that he could not be arrested because he was a minor. Little did he know that even minors go to prison when they don't follow the law. You, are you wanna, you wanna, you really want to have a bet on that? I guarantee. Stay out of the roadway. Stay out of the roadway. All right. You want to deal with it? Out of the road. You too. You're in the road. Come here. Put your hands behind your back. Put your hands behind your back. Put your hands behind your back. Stop resisting. You're going to get saved. Stop resisting. You're going to get saved. Stop resisting. Hey. 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 Stop resisting. 
As they try to take the teenager into custody, two other teenagers approach them and attempt to take a fanny pack from the teenager who is being detained. While one officer put the 14-year-old into the back of his police car, another officer tried to take the 15-year-old into custody for obstructing official business because the 15-year-old kept refusing to leave the road. Put your hands behind your back! Stop resisting! You're gonna get tased! Stop resisting! What is you detaining me for? 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 I ain't detaining me for none. What is you detaining me for? What is you detaining me for? Get off me. Relax. Get off me here, cuss for money. Oh, mama, get off of me. Relax. Why is I'm detained for? I gave you a lawful order. I told you to come in. You guys play games? This is what happens. Why is I being detained? The boy continues to demand the reason as to why he was being arrested, but refuses to listen to the officer when he tries to explain. After the teens were placed under arrest, another teen told an officer that one of them had her bag, referring to the fanny pack that they were trying to take from the 14-year-old. Little did the officer know what is it that he was going to find. Get out of the roadway! You got my bag! I need my bag! Why do it? Like, I don't know. Like, what's up? What, what do I do? What do I do? I'm yelling. What do I do? He got my bag. I need my bag. 4152. Are any units on scene? The crowd. Can you advise the fire and need us? Oh, this is your bag. It's a BB gun. It's a. Put your hands behind your back. Put your hands behind your back. Stop resisting. Bro, you got to You gotta. The officer unzips the bag and sees what appears to be a firearm inside. The teen, however, told officers it was a BB gun and not a real one. Hey, Lane, you wanna go over there with Chris? Stupid. Who rolls around with it? How are you? It's a BB gun. Why would you roll around with that? Why? It was in the bag. We did some of water, bro. Female, she said the Glock was her, or the bag was hers. Didn't realize it was a BB gun at first because it looks right. looks so, legit. So that bag what mine though. The bag is mine. I'm, I'm gonna be I'm gonna be real with you. The bag mine. Okay, it's gonna go with you. All right, that's my money, my phone, my charge, my everything in there. Hey, we got it right here. All right, I need that. Hey, free me, y'all! Both the 14 and 15 year olds were arrested for resisting arrest and obstructing official business. But it isn't always the case when teenagers walk around carrying weapons, especially real ones, and at school. Just because I have a gun doesn't mean I'm a criminal. I understand that. All right. We understand it. 18 year old Nolan Rosen of Orange High School, Ohio, had been suspected of carrying a weapon in the facility. Not long after, police responded to the school after a bullet was found inside the high school cafeteria and then decided to search all the students. Oh, okay. Something, somebody find something you know about Dude, it? Dude, I had a bullet in my pocket, but it went, like, it's not like I'm planning anything. Oh, okay. I dropped, Wait, no, so you, you, okay. But I don't know I'm not allowed to bring a bullet. Okay. Okay, why don't you come? Wait, I'm not like a school shooter. A few minutes into the search, Rosen can be seen admitting to having brought a bullet into the building, but told officers that he's not a school shooter. Rosen was then taken to the front office, where he was questioned even further, and one of the officers began to search him. I know why it would raise a concern, but I'm not like, I'm really scared about that stuff from like school shooters too. I'm like very, uh, it like, makes me anxious too that anyone could just walk into school and shoot it up. So, I'm like, are you worried about that? Yeah, I worry about that stuff a lot sometimes. What made you bring those with you? Just because literally it makes me feel comfortable. Rosen mentions how he only carries the rifle around because it makes him feel safe and comfortable. The officers immediately followed up by inquiring whether the rifle was in his car. I don't carry it all the time, but I just literally carried it in my car. Like, I don't bring it in the school. Is there a gun in your car right now? Yeah. Okay, well, let's go out. So you you'll stay. Yeah, yeah. Um, um, they're in my bag. It's not an assault, assault rifle. It's a, literally a twenty-two Henry repeating rifle. I didn't, I didn't match for a small game. I just wanted to know if you have one there. Yeah. Not made to kill people. 
where are you parked? I can show you. What kind of car is that? A black Chevy. Immediately after, the police officers go to his car and find the weapon. This isn't one that it like folds in half. I it? think you got, no, it's a, not a breach. I, I think you have to, let's see what, oh, okay, so there's. Let's see if this goes up there. Later, Rosen was called into the principal's office where he was told what would happen to him. Well, surely you can imagine um, having a gun on school property is um, a major issue. So I am suspending you for 10 days with a recommendation for expulsion. So what happens now is the suspension, suspension will start tomorrow. Um, and uh, only the superintendent can determine whether or not to expel the student. So I'm, I'm recommending you for expulsion. Since you are also on a 504 plan, um, somebody from the special education department will be reaching out to you because we're going to have to hold what's called a manifestation determination meeting. Um, but at this point, it is a 10-day suspension with a recommendation for expulsion for um, weapons, specifically a gun and disruption of misconduct. At this point, nothing seemed to be going well for Rosen. Soon after, police officers arrived and told the young man that he would be arrested and taken into police custody. You're going to come with us. We're going to handcuff you until we get you outside to the cruiser. Because there's a lot of people going on. We want to save you any kind of... There's no law against bringing a gun. It's a policy. There's no... Like, show me the statue. There's no statue. I, I told you before. I assure you, there is an actual law. We'll show it to you when we get to the station. I mean, it's not... We're not making it up. We're, we're trying to... I think you are making it no, up. No, we're trying to accommodate okay. you... I'll do you a favor. ...in a good way. ...for you right now. But it's, you said safety zone. So how am I supposed to know this is a safety zone? A safety zone is any school property and or school <laughs> bus stop. Did it say safety zone is and or school property? School. I don't think it does. Yeah, school it does. safety zone. School right. safety zone is defined as any school Wait, property. Wait, legal conveyance or possession of deadly weapon... So that's what you're getting charged with, as well as something no, called man. inducing panic, okay? We can explain all that to you. We're gonna formally serve you some charges, um, but for right now, you're gonna have to come with us. We're gonna walk you out to a police car. We're gonna handcuff you there. Um, and one of the things I wanna do before we take you out there is read you what's called your Miranda rights, okay? Charged with possessing a deadly weapon in a school safety zone and inducing panic, Rosen was then led outside and put in a police car, but Rosen kept on arguing with the officers, saying he didn't realize that bringing bullets and a gun to school was against the rules. I didn't, like, I had no listen, idea listen. the rifle was like a big okay, okay, okay. It's a 22 caliber. Listen, listen, it's not listen, like listen. a fucking assault no, rifle. It's not, a, it's not like a made for killing. It's made for shooting small game. I understand you'll have an opportunity to explain your version of why this played out or how this happened. Okay, you'll have that. Maybe right now to each of us is not the opportunity. Take a breath a minute. Try, try to relax a minute. We've got to move forward, okay? Do you get what I'm saying? You'll have an opportunity to explain it. Rosen, whom police believe meant no harm, was posted on bond, but could face more than a year in prison if convicted. If you enjoyed this video, watch this one. And don't forget to subscribe. Goodbye.